Good morning and welcome back to BeefLink TV, your daily dose of industry information. Today, in a break from our usual format, we're at the fourth business leaders, talking to some of our speakers about the sessions that they've led today and some of the attendees to see what they're most excited about. I, I did So what are you excited about the most today? Uh, we have some great speakers coming in today. We are picked on topics that our members wanted us to talk about. So I'm quite excited. They're here. We're ready to go. And hopefully uh, our members will take something away from today that will help them run their business. It's always good to get out and meet our clients. So that's always a good thing. But also knowing what concerns them and knowing about it so that we can talk to them about it really puts us ahead of the curve. Probably reflective of my role and what I'm most involved in is the uh, the dominance of the ocean freight discussions we've had this morning. Obviously, Maersk being uh, being there and talking about their uh, position and their future plans. And if there's one thing from your session today that you want people to take home with them, what would that be? I think it's just uh, there's optimism for next year, and I think uh, there's going to be a lot of geopolitical issues stopping us, but we've managed to cope with a very tough year, 2024. So I think um, we should be optimistic and hopeful. I think. Yeah, today's been quite a mix from technology through to ocean freight and I really enjoyed some of the succinct points that the Institute of Chartered Shipbrokers brought up in terms of ocean and what trends we're going to see in 2025. And also what was really quite exciting is he had a very similar view to myself that it's going to require a lot of resilience and quite a lot of uh, challenge in terms of what's happening in the Red Sea. I think just the insights of what's next about the sea freight world especially with all the challenges we're facing, facing holidays and disruptions and volumes requests. We do a lot of importing from China and him highlighting all the uh, possibility of the island territories where the six, con six countries own one particular area. Yeah, I thought that was quite, quite interesting. And one thing from your session today that really caught my attention was about the Red Sea. Obviously that's a big issue. Um, but you focus mainly on when the peace comes. Can you just kind of expand on that and what that means for BFA members? Absolutely, thank you. So unfortunately it's probably not going to change in the near future, but it's important now to plan for when it does. So it's unlikely that all shipping lines will return at the same time. So there's likely to be the, the first movers who actually uh, arrive in Europe before the ships that are left before them going around the Cape. It will cause congestion in Europe with the ships arriving at different times. And that's likely also to compound with equipment shortages. So there will be a very difficult transition period when the ships do return to Red Sea and Suez transits. I don't think it's a particular session. I think the whole agenda is interesting. Uh, it's a great opportunity to stay on top of current issues, um, to be informed, but also to share the day with colleagues in the industry and learn from them and share our experiences. So one thing that I've loved about today's event is just understanding um, some of the important challenges that are going on in the industry. Um, so if, whether we take the EES, for example, or some of the other customs, uh, digitalization aspects, I think these are all things that really help us to, you know, um, represent our members well. And, and if there's one kind of key message that you want attendees to take home today, what would that be? So our biggest issue that we have, and, and this is generally, I think, with freight, is that they never adhere to the traffic management systems that we have in place. They're there for a reason. And if they, if they, because we spent a lot of time turning around non-compliant freight right. that haven't gone through these systems, and if they did, they would go a lot through a lot quicker. Yeah. So that, for me, is the biggest message. Please just adhere to them, and then it doesn't cause so much congestion. all the speakers so far, very informative, mm -hmm. open and honest conversations as well. Um, so chat and rules apply, which is very good, but uh, nobody was holding back on being honest about the problems we're all going to be facing in the near future. Yeah, I'm particularly looking forward to hearing about AI and getting a better understanding of how we can embrace that and use it in a practical operational sense in freight forwarding. Because there's a lot of 
discussions, there's a lot of generalizations about AI, but sooner rather than later we're going to have to turn that into an operational reality and that's what I'm looking forward to learning about. Today's session you spoke about obviously the future of AI and where you see that going. Where does that take the industry? So um, we cover quite a few areas mm -hmm. which AI can add the value in terms of the uh, the current trade compliance and the freight forwarding processes work so but the uh, but mainly we were we talked about on the processing side so currently um, the whole comp trade compliance is very very manual mm -hmm. globally so um, our predictions and my prediction and, our, and the way we, we're working with our customers is that increasingly people will be, this process will be automated and there will be less and less people will be using and doing the manual work. And this is uh, the, the beauty of AI, which we can see that will, will, everyone will benefit in coming, coming uh, months and years. I think the most impressive thing is how young people are going to, get, going to get involved in the industry. It's like the military services, people don't think about the logisticians, yeah. even though people like, um, well, Tim Lawrence, Princess Royal's husband, was in logistics. I once asked a man who was helping to run a complicated school why he did it. He said I lo he loves solving problems. And if you think of all the upsets going around in trade around the world, most people realize that their goods have arrived or their goods have been exported they don't think of the people who've had to solve the problems. And one of the things that you touched on in your session today was about inspiring and recruiting the younger generation. What do you think, in your personal opinion, is kind of the biggest barrier for the younger generation to come into logistics? But by far, the biggest barrier is actually a lack of awareness of the great opportunities that exist. When we originally started the campaign, just over 76% of the people we asked, mainly young people, said, well, we don't know anything about it. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if it's right for me because I just don't know. Yeah. And so what we're doing is raising awareness of the different jobs, mm -hmm. of the different careers, of the different organisations that you can work uh, within, uh, within the logistics industry. Uh, for me, I really enjoy these events because I work, I guess, in a silo of sustainability, but getting to understand what's going on in the rest of the industry and actually even wider than that, some of the biggest companies, big names or industry, giving us updates on what's actually happening is, is really, really beneficial. So uh, I find uh, I get a lot of that out of it. Well, I think most of the sessions are going to be very interesting, whether it's AI or whether it's the EES presentation. But the one I'm most looking forward to is the one that will be the launch of the ITN business uh, channels um, program about the industry which BIFA has very much led the way on uh, and that I'm really looking forward to the fact that that's going to be launched at the Business Leaders Forum. So in case anybody hasn't seen anything about the program it obviously launches today can you just introduce that program and what it aims to do for the industry? Yes of course so Transforming Logistics will be a, about a half hour program about the changes, challenges, innovations in the logistics industry uh, BIFA play a part in that, but we also have a range of partners um, talking about sustainability, skills, um, and a lot of developments in the industry that perhaps people don't realise. Well, just like any uh, group event with, that BIFA organises, it's just really great to network with like-minded professionals who we can get things off our chest, ask the questions directly to the people that, that know the answers, yeah. put your hands up a lot and uh, make some good friends. It's, it's a great industry to be in, I still believe that. Um, I'm most excited for just coming here and networking, meeting companies and business leaders in the industry and just learning about what the latest challenges are and opportunities. I think for me, I think the, 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 the most enjoyable part is the all the senior stakeholders coming together, you know, kind of, you know, talking about strategy, talking about, you know, um, issues that are affecting everybody within the freight industry. So I think, you know, for me, that, that has been probably the most, you know, enjoyable and um, probably the, 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 the most um, benefit that I'll take away from today.
thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. The details of our next event will be published soon, so make sure you keep an eye out for that and we hope to see you there. This has been B for Link TV, your daily dose of industry information. Mm -hmm.